Joseph Harmon vying for chairmanship of the PNC. Man found dead in his apartment, body bore several stab wounds. There should be no custodial sentence for possession of small quantities of marijuana, forms Prime Minister Nagamutu. And government expresses full confidence in Jacob ahead of the local government election. Those were the top headlines for the week ending May 18. I'm Sandy Ramutar. Good afternoon. Starting things off on MTV News Update's Weekend Review, we tell you that President David Granger has heeded the request of the Regional Democratic Council of Region 9 and has removed Carl Parker from the post of Regional Executive Officer. Here is more. Regional Executive Officer Carl Parker has been transferred from Region 9 and placed in Region 8, according to Chairman of the Region, Brian Alicock. His transfer comes on the heels of concerns raised by residents who were paved with his reappointment after sexual allegations were levied against him. Uh, we asked the president for him not to stay here and gave me the reason, George, so they didn't tell us anything. So a week in the office here and then he was removed to, he was transferred to Region 8, to the area for Region Parker had resumed duties on March 12, 2018, after he was reappointed as regional executive officer by the Ministry of Communities. The sexual assault charges were dismissed against the official on March 6 due to insufficient evidence. He was temporarily sacked of his duties following the allegations, which were levied against him by an elected representative of the region. Parker was charged and placed on $200,000 bail for the said offence. Deputy Regional Executive Officer Kevin Ward is presently acting as the Regional Executive Officer. Sandy Ramutar for MTV's News Update. On the political scope, executive member of the People's National Congress, Joseph Harmon, has announced that he intends to vie for the post of chairman of the party during the August elections. That position is currently being held by another long-standing member of the party, Basil Williams. Godfrey Brooms has more. Executive member of the People's National Congress, Joseph Harmon, who also holds the governmental post of Minister of State, has confirmed that he will be contesting for chairmanship of the party in a statement to the media. And so every member of the party can aspire to the highest office in our party. And like many others, I am a member of the party of long standing and therefore have indicated that it is my desire, it is my interest in um, putting myself up as a candidate for the chairmanship of the party. So far, he is the only person that has openly expressed the candidature for that post. He noted that the PNC is an extremely democratic party. The current chairman of the party is Basil Williams, who also holds the governmental positions of Attorney General and Minister of Legal Affairs. He was unopposed at the last biennial congress in 2016. President David Granger was also unchallenged as leader of the party and so was Minister of Communities Ronald Bulkan for the position of party treasurer. Dr. George Norton and Valda Lawrence were voted back in as vice chairpersons despite James Bond vying for one of those positions. The party's Congress will be in August 2018. Godfrey Brooms, MTV News Update. In a gory story, Nickel John reports that a senior worker attached to the Aurora Gold Mines was found dead in his apartment on Tuesday, May 22. The man's naked body was found bearing several stab wounds with his hands bound. Here is more. Police said the murder of 42-year-old Neil White occurred sometime between 22 hours 22 and 23 hours 45 last night. The body was discovered naked with both hands bound, bearing several stab wounds. Police said a 25-year-old male has been arrested and is in police custody. The suspect was a guest of the now deceased and was arrested at his Fryhead village West Kanji Burby's home this morning. Administration and Human Resources Manager at Aurora Gold Mines, Peter Benny, says the investigation remains active. He said the compound was fully secured. However, the police are conducting their investigation. What I can tell you is that our security is working 
um, along with the Guyana Police Force in this investigation. And whatever comes out of it, whether there is need for improvement or whatever, we look at it. But, um, you know, we, we, we don't think there was... Uh, Indications do not show. No, that there was any. Penny said he has known the deceased for more than 20 years. He claimed that the two worked at Oh My Gold Mines before moving on to AGM. Benny, being sympathetic, said the company has lost one of its valued employees, given that White was a major player in the supply chain to make their work effective. He was passionate about supply chain. He is very well organized and very well respected among his peers and employees. He's quiet. He's a loving person and one who has dedicated himself to being a charitable force. You probably guys, you guys will probably know that several years ago he worked with charities in Linden uh, on HIV and AIDS and so on. I can I can only speak well of him because um, of the fact because of the fact that I knew him many years ago and because that he worked here with us. Nikhil John, the reporting for MTV News Update. The Society Against Sexual Orientation Discrimination has laid its concerns to the security and health sectors during a panel discussion. SAS had briefed the representatives on the challenges faced by the LGBT community in public spaces. Here is more. A diverse panel discussion has been used to address the challenges faced by lesbians, gays, transgenders and bisexuals. So says Managing Director of Sassot, Joel Simpson. This is to bring to the fore the troubles faced by the marginalized group in public spaces and to find possible solutions. Allow persons to share different experiences about engagement with the police. So they will talk about things as a trans person, did the police ask you your gender identity? When you said that you prefer to be identified as female, did they address you with the correct pronoun and so on? Um, so all of that is shared as part of the training methodology. And we found over years that having that panel of, of users of the system is one of the more effective ways because there's nothing more powerful than hearing directly from somebody who's affected by a particular situation. And that in itself, um, and, many, and many of the officers and many of the people we train, healthcare workers and so on, um, often don't come into contact with LGBT persons in a safe space, in a non-confrontational way outside of their job, and really get to hear what people's issues are, and it really helps to humanize the issue and the cause. A number of persons have been seeking support from the organization for counseling from discrimination and abuse. However, majority of them were afraid to reveal their identities to the public, explained Simpson. Because a huge part of a huge part of the challenge with dealing with situations like that is that persons don't want to be identified. They don't want to go to persons directly and have any kind of confrontation about who they're complaining about because that re-victimizes them in, a, in and of itself. And many of them also don't want um, LGBT organizations going into this, to, 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 to their places of work to represent them. Because the interpretation is there, why did you go to an LGBT organization? That confirms that you're a part of that particular community. As such, Sassad was able to occasionally engage the management of organizations to have the issues addressed. In other cases, persons were given legal support to address their concerns through SASAD. We've often had to refer persons to our, attorney, uh, our attorneys um, in Caribono, Caribbean Lawing for Social Justice, as we also have a community paralegal services program which provides persons with legal advice, legal representation, and other kinds of paralegal services. So there have been cases where that kind of negotiation hasn't worked and we've had to try to use um, the limited laws um, that offer some amount of general protection um, for persons and to see how best within the, the limited legal framework that we have, we could advance their rights and protections. SASAD is a human rights movement working for equality and justice and combating challenges faced by the LGBT community. 
On a humanitarian vote, former First Lady Varshni Singh, who met with First Lady Sandra Granger, has lauded her outstanding work in championing women and children's rights. Find out more in this report. Former First Lady Varshini Singh has lauded the work of the current First Lady Sandra Granger, who assumed the position in 2015. Singh pointed out that the two met and she was briefed on the ongoing and future works of the First Lady. I think she's doing a wonderful job, if that's what you mean, mm -hmm. yes. Um, I, I've met with her and we've spoken um, extensively on the needs and um, she shared with me some of her, her visions and the work that she was doing. So I think she's doing a, a wonderful job. Forest Lady Sandra Grange is known for championing women's rights through training sessions. She was given the Female Leadership Impact Award by the Center for Economic Leadership Global Development. Granger was recognized for her outstanding work in empowering youths and the less fortunate children in Guyana. Singh is actively involved with the Kids First Fund, a non-governmental organization founded in 2000. The organization provides funding for special projects to enhance the lives of children in Guyana. Being married to Barra Jagdeo, she served as First Lady from 1999 to 2004. On the Ganja Bill, Prime Minister Moses Nagamutu says the Narcotic Drug and Psychotropic Substances Act should be amended. He believes there should be no custodial sentences for possession of small quantities of the drug. However, he said there must be consultations on the way forward. Here's Lashana Gomes, Cornelius. On Monday, May 21, a 27-year-old man was hammered with three years in jail for trafficking 8.4 grams of cannabis. However, this did not sit well with the Alliance for Change, a partner of the coalition. The AFC, in a bold attempt to help bring about imminent changes to the country's laws, is calling for the removal of custodial sentencing for marijuana possession. A day after the lawful sentencing of the man, the Alliance for Change expressed dissatisfaction. The party, which has representatives in Parliament, is urging legislators to act swiftly to eliminate custodial sentencing for possessing small quantities of marijuana. Prime Minister Moses Nagamutu, when questioned about AFC's stance on the matter, revealed that appropriate consultations on the way forward are necessary. Uh, sections of society that say you must not uh, tinker with the, uh, with the law and uh, you, you shouldn't uh, create an opening for people to feel that they are, they are safe smoking uh, cannabis. So you'll have to deal with some of the uh, feelings in society as well as attitudes and then you have to do consultation. So I would hope that an issue like this would have to be subjected to broad consultation. Uh, include the opposition because you don't want to go and have a divided position on the issue as to whether you want to, uh, to reform our existing uh, uh, psychotropic abuse, substance abuse. In December 2015, Alliance for Change Member of Parliament Michael Carrington had carried before the National Assembly an amended narcotic drug and a psychotropic substances bill. However, that bill is yet to be read in the House. Reporting for MTV News Update, Lashona Gomes, Cornelius. Expressing the government's take on the marijuana discussion, Minister of State Joseph Harmon chimed in on the discussion of the custodial sentencing and persons found with small quantities of marijuana. He, like the Prime Minister, said a consultation on the way forward is needed. Lashana Gomes, Cornelius, has the details. Prime Minister Moses Nagamutu had called for the removal of custodial sentencing from possession of small quantities of marijuana. He did note that there must be a consultative process before any decision is made. Speaking on the topic today was Minister of State Joseph Harmon. He noted that the government will do what is necessary at the opportune time regarding the amendment of the Act once there is a direct need for such. However, the minister told of a past time when the laws pertaining to the possession of marijuana and other drugs were sparsely enforced. Those affecting issues, the minister indicated, are no longer visible in the country's current judicial system. 
With that, Minister Harmon commended the work being done by those positioned within the legal fraternity to enforce the laws of the country. If you are found with a small amount, that is considered to be use. And therefore, the magistrate has a discretion as to what can be done, whether you can be given community service and so on. Once it exceeds that limit, then the law takes away that discretion from the magistrate. In reiterating this message, the minister stressed that the law is not made by magistrates, rather the laws are enforced by them. The minister further noted while the decriminalization of marijuana is also another major topic of discussion by many, it is important to note that such decriminalization of the drug will call for serious consultations. And I believe that there is a motion in the National Assembly, not really for decriminalization of marijuana, but for allowing magistrates to have a greater discretion in sentencing, because this is a question of sentencing. Decriminalization of marijuana, as the Attorney General pointed out, and I believe as the Prime Minister also pointed out, will require a larger consultation of the population. Reporting for MTV News Update, Lashona Gomes, Cornelius. The government is ensuring that youths are afforded every opportunity of development. It is against this backdrop that a two-day youth business summit was convened. Here again is Lashana Gomes, Cornelius. The summit is being held under the theme Empowering Guyana's Youth Through Training, Mentorship and Leadership Development. Minister of Business Dominic Gaskin during his address at the inaugural Youth Business Summit indicated that the business sector plays an important role in building the local economy and the youths of the nation. The minister stressed that his ministry is actively supporting young people involved in business. As such, he noted that the government is working to ensure youths are afforded every opportunity to become meaningful contributing members of society. Now, the Ministry of Business has implemented and supported a number of programs in the past and will continue to do so. And the government on the whole supports programs that encourage the development of businesses. And this particular event is part of one such program. We've done um, Youth Biz 592, where our ministry collaborated with the Ministry of Public Security to provide business training and grants to young people. We currently have an in-school entrepreneurship program, where we provide mentoring to CSEC students with grants of $30,000 to start a little business. We have a Green Business Technology Fund, where we are awarding this year 12 small businesses with grants of $1 million each for innovative green business ideas. Minister of Social Cohesion, Dr. George Norton, said that the nation is moving in the right direction as youths are thriving with many involved in the business sector. With that, the minister urged the gathering of young people to be wise in their endeavors. Through activities like we have here this morning, we want to equip the youths with all the tools needed for them to turn the ideas that they might have created over the years, the dreams that they might have had, their ambition into reality. In short, this inaugural business summit is poised to charge the business and employment and to change the business and employment landscape of this country for the better. We want you to consider yourself as being the steering wheel to pilot this nation to prosperity. Also addressing the gathering at the opening ceremony was Prime Minister Moses Nakamoto. He explained that a two-day summit will provide participating youths with more knowledge on various aspects of business development and sustenance. Today, I urge you to make full, take full advantage of all opportunities 
for skills training and to be competent managers of businesses, however, however small. Besides opportunities here in Guyana, scholarships and training have been negotiated with several countries, such as Mexico, India, and China, to help provide relevant exposure for your growth, development, and ultimately your freedom of choice and employment of work. Reporting for MTV News Update, Lashona Gomes, Cornelius. The Ministry of Foreign Affairs says that a significant number of immigrants have been entering Guyana through the borderline unregistered. However, if these persons give reasonable explanations for entering Guyana, they will be permitted to stay for three to six months. Here is more. Minister of Foreign Affairs Carl Greenwich says immigrants entering Guyana through borderlines should register at the ports of entry. His statement comes on the heel of a significant number of persons entering Guyana and failing to present themselves to immigration officers. Register the port of entry. That is, that is a, a major problem in all countries. Even if they are prepared to grant you um, permission to enter, you have to formally uh, um, indicate that you're entering so that uh, the immigration authorities have a record. What has happened? Minister Greenwich says persons who are intercepted entering Guyana illegally will be requested to immediately register themselves with immigration. This flexibility has been in effect for the last two months. If they are, if they are, if they are encountered by the police, intercepted by the police, uh, they will be given that opportunity. Um, but of course, the thing to do, whatever nationality you are, if you want to enter Guyana, is to, is to go to the port of entry and register. Depending on the reasons given for entering Guyana, immigrants will be able to remain for three to six months. After that period elapses, discretion will be used to determine their stay in the country, explained the Foreign Affairs Minister. Recently, there has been an increased influx of Venezuelans flocking the borderline in Burima Waini. There were complaints of foreigners not being properly monitored without any record at the ports of entry. Sandy Ramutar. For MTV's News Update. City Hall has not been able to garner significant revenue from the container fee since they had agreed with the private sector bodies to have an interim fee of $5,000 per container. Despite that was done since in 2016, the situation remains unchanged. Yannis Abrams filed this report. City Mayor Patricia Chase Green has confirmed that City Hall intends to have a fixed cost for the container tax instead of the interim fee of $5,000 that is currently instituted. During an interview with the mayor, she claimed that the private sector commission is yet to set a final date for a meeting between the two concerning the container fee. Chair Screen disclosed to News Update that City Hall had to cancel several meetings with the PSC as they were clashing with its statutory meetings. They would have proposed the date, which was the 14th. We would have responded to them saying that that was our statutory meeting and we should meet on another day. They did agree that we'll meet on the 15th, I think it was, but then they later called to say that that date wasn't convenient to them. At our last statutory meeting, um, we were informed that they had proposed the date of the 28th, but again, on the 28th is our statutory meeting, so we would not be able to meet. We have since responded to say that the 28th is not a convenient date for them, for us, because the council would have discussed it, and we are hoping that we can meet any time before the 25th of this month. We have not received, as of I speak now, as I speak to you that they have agreed or disagreed to meet with us on or before the 25th in the chambers. Because I took it to the council for the council to make that decision. It is the council's proposal to charge $8,000 for every 20-foot container, while the 40-foot containers would attract $10,000 each. Tom Clark, Rice and King, told News a bit last year. One of the reasons the council enforced the fee is due to the containers damaging the city's roads. Reporting for MTV's News Update, I am Yanis Abrams. 
Now on a slate of sugar. The collapse of the sugar industry looms if President David Granger stays in his quote-unquote cool mode, says opposition leader Barra Jagdio. Here are the details. The opposition party, in its continuous attempt to bring disgrace to the coalition administration, has attacked the government at one of its sore points, the sugar industry. The charismatic opposition leader, Barra Jaglio, who often speaks of doom and gloom under the Granger government, expressed nothing different today when he held a press conference. He lashed out at the government since he believes decisions surrounding the state of the sugar industry and its future is not forthcoming. Jagdeo claimed if the Ghana Sugar Corporation does not get it right, the sugar industry is likely to collapse. He, the, the, whole, the economy is grinding to, an, uh, to a halt and he's cool about it. He's cool about everything, about the judiciary, about every aspect of life. What we need is, and he's even cool about their He's cold about the promises they made to people in this country. Maybe we need some heat and we need Granger to rant once in a, in a while. And then maybe we'll address the pressing issues before, before our country. We will then address them. This coolness. And then, I, I, as I said before, Granger is totally out of it. He's in a different world. One of the decisions the opposition leader is looking forward to is the composition and installation of the board of directors of Gaisuku. Jagdeo pointed to the need for a feasibility study to be conducted on the closure of the estates. That study would also take into consideration the social impact such closures will have on sugar-dependent communities. Five minutes it takes to solve this problem. A Granger has been taken forever to do forever and so how does this inspire any confidence that we are addressing this entity with seriousness we're going to have a, a collapse of the remaining estates we're going to have a collapse of the the remaining estates it's not just just the ones that they have privatized the opposition party has time and again jabbed at the government over the state and future of the sugar industry. The opposition party believes that no sugar estate should be closed. Rather, the entire sector could be saved and returned to its former glory if specific steps are taken by the government. However, the government has pumped billions of dollars behind the ailing sector since 2015. But the government has had it with the diversion of taxpayers' dollars to the failing sugar industry. As such, the government is waging the sale of three sugar estates, Skeldon, Rosal and East Demerara. These estates are deemed economically unfeasible. Already under the coalition government, the Wales Sugar Factory was closed, following the label given to it by Minister of State Joseph Harmon as an economic nightmare. The LBI Sugar Estate was also closed under the coalition, but that was a decision that was already made by the PPP whilst in government. The government has expressed full confidence in the Ghana Elections Commission as it prepares the whole local government elections later this year. Yanis Abrams reports. Minister of State Joseph Harmon says he is confident that the Ghana Elections Commission, GCOM, will be ready for the upcoming local government election. The election is slated for November 2018. Minister Harmon said that parties have already begun preparing for the election. GCOM, I, I believe GCOM will be ready whenever the bell rings. I am confident that they have people there who know what they have to do. And, um, and so I, I do not have um, any misgivings about what they have to do and what needs to be done in this regard. Only six months away from the election, Harmon mentioned the Ministry of Communities has a planned public awareness campaign which will be launched to highlight matters concerning local government. Central government has allocated $2.9 billion to host the local government election. During the ministry's 2017 review, the Minister of Communities, Ronald Bulkan, mentioned that it is the ministry's obligation 
to ensure that the local organs are prepared for elections. The government has set a 50% target for this compared to 2016's 43% participation. Reporting for MTV's News Update, I am Yanis Abrams. Taking sides with the Prime Minister, Opposition Leader Bharat Jagdeo asserted that small quantities of marijuana should be decriminalized. However, he will not be supporting the legalization of the herb in its entirety. Here is more. The discussion about the use of alternative sentencing for persons found with small quantities of marijuana is picking up steam. It has caught the attention of the Opposition Leader Bharat Jagdeo. Jagdeo stated that the opposition party is firm with its decision to decriminalize the use of small quantities of marijuana. As it stands, Jagdeo believes alternative sentencing should be given to persons found with a few grams. I don't think we will find any family who will want that to happen. And as I said before, they're not getting off totally. They gotta be doing some things. Let them go and clean up the school compounds. Let them go and, somebody smiling, yeah, school compounds and stuff like um, school compound, or, or let them go and you know, go in for rehab. However, he asserted that charges against the possession and trafficking of the herb should not completely be eliminated from the constitution. I'm not, I'm not supporting the legalization of marijuana, growing marijuana, trading marijuana, um, selling marijuana in Guyana. You go to jail for that sort of thing. That's our law. I'm not supporting that. On the other hand, the Alliance for Change has renewed its call for the removal of custodial sentences for the said offense. That's it for MTV News Updates Weekend Review. The newscast can be viewed online on our MTV's Facebook page and also on our YouTube channel. Join us on Monday, May 28 at 7 hours 30 for an edition of MTV News Update. On behalf of our news and technical team, I'm Sandy Ramutar, thanking you for watching.